Okay, so welcome back. We're going to talk now. So we just did the categorical imperative. And now we're going to do the conventionalist ethic. Okay, This says, you know, business is more or less kind of like a game. And it has its own kind of set of rules. And, you know, basically as, you're, as long as you're not breaking the law, that's okay. okay. Now the criticism of this idea, okay, you can do anything as long as you're not violating the law, and that's okay. You know, is it, does it make sense that business should define life for everybody? Okay. In other words, should the laws of business be universally applied to other areas of life, like in the government or, um, alternatively, in societal concerns? Okay. So let me give a kind of an everyday example of the conventional ethic. Okay? Some of you may play Grand Theft Auto 3, right? Or Grand Theft Auto Las Vegas, whatever. Okay? Now you may enjoy the game, but that doesn't mean that you go out after you turn off your PlayStation and go steal a car, right? You know that in the confines of that game, that kind of behavior is okay. But outside of the game, it's not. That's a good example of the conventionist ethic in action. Or maybe some of you play poker. Someone says, hey man, you're a liar. Well, come on, it was poker. I was just bluffing. See, in poker, that's okay, but outside of poker, it's not. Now, you think about this maybe in business also, right? Think about something like child labor. Well, maybe in some countries, it's kind of legal. So then, does that mean you should necessarily be doing that kind of thing? Right? Does it mean that the, 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 the lax laws and norms of business should transcend into other areas of life and encourage us to engage in things like child labor or other practices of questionable morality. And these, this is a question that you have to struggle with. Okay. So that's the conventionalist ethic. Now we're going to do the disclosure rule. So if you're not sure whether something is ethical or not, ask how you feel explaining that to a wider audience, such as the media, such as people on TV, possibly even your family. Okay? Now, there's also criticism associated with this as well. Um, well first of all, who are you disclosing that information to? Right? Um, sometimes you disclose an action um, to someone and someone thinks it's a good idea, but then they kind of reflect on it later and then it, it's not ethical. So let's kind of give some examples of this. I think that'll clarify a little bit. Okay, so when I was in college, I lived in a fraternity house. And, you know, a bunch of single guys, and we weren't the cleanest, right? And so every Sunday, what we would do is we would clean the fraternity house. And I would tell all my frat brothers, this place needs to be so clean that your grandmothers could walk in here and not scream. Okay, that was kind of the standard that we set. Okay, so you could tell your grandmother and she would not scream. Okay, and that seemed to work reasonably well. In fact, my grandmother did come to the frat house and she was impressed with how clean it was. Okay, so that worked. That was a standard. It, what was good enough for us may not have been good enough for our grandmothers. Okay, let's give another example. Right now, this is one of the the problems with the disclosure rule that I'm about to highlight. Okay, when I went to grad graduate school. Okay. Um, they bought this really fancy new furniture. I mean, it looked great, right? And within a few days, all the kids, you know, they'd stepped in Lord knows what, animal waste and all sorts of things, and they'd put their feet up on the furniture, okay, and, and get animal waste all over the furniture. And I remember I got so mad when I saw that happening. I asked one of my students, I said, you know what, what would your mother say if she saw you ruining the furniture that way? And he looked at me and he said, she'd say she's paying my tuition and I can do whatever I want here. So you see, the disclosure rule is not always the best guide. Uh, depends on whose grandmother's coming to the frat house. Depends on whose mother would see you putting your feet up and ruining furniture. Okay? Uh, a, a good example from business, and this was uh, courtesy of one of your colleagues a couple of years ago. I won't say what organization he worked for, um, but he said that they were at work and there were pigeons in the rafters uh, of the building. And instead of just calling like a pest removal or setting up traps for the animals or, you know, the, the more humane choices, 
I guess his manager decided he'd bring a pellet gun. And they started shooting him out of the rafters. And, of course, you know, the manager was doing it, all the employees were, and they were having a great time. So they asked the manager what to do. The manager said thought that was a good idea. And they all thought it was a good idea, too, to just shoot the pigeons out of rafters, evidently. Plus, it was a lot of fun. But then the local news media found out about it, and they were on that, the, the news that night. And then the manager realized that it wasn't such a good idea because his boss wound up firing him from that organization for that kind of behavior. So you see the disclosure rule is also far from perfect. Again, who are you disclosing to? So I've just done that one. Okay, let's just talk about the doctrine of the man. This comes from Aristotle. And, you know, he says virtue is achieved through moderation. Okay, avoid behavior that is excessive or deficient of a virtue. So what does that mean? First of all, that's one of the criticisms of it. What does that really mean? The doctrine itself is very vague. Okay? Um, basically, if something is too good, it's probably not a good idea. Like we have that expression, you know, um, too much of a good thing. Or if something is too bad, then that might actually not be bad after all. So wrong, it's got to be right kind of thing. Or as my grandmother once said, you know, not everybody loved Jesus. Okay? So, you know... Anything that is too good or too bad is probably not ethical, and ethical behavior usually lies somewhere in the middle. Again, what does that even mean? There are lots of behaviors that are very mediocre but aren't all that ethical. Okay? You think of somebody that shows up to work, does a 9-to-5 job, but makes no effort to help his or her colleagues. He just abides by the bare minimum. Well, that's probably not all that ethical either, right? So this is some of the problems with the doctrine of the mean. Okay, so we'll stop here and we'll pick up in just a second.